Hello folks, today is March the 23rd. Um, we are starting a bit late, but we have quite a couple of things on the agenda. Um, to start, we want to chat about the Bootstrap GA and what falls under this, which is hopefully scheduled for the end of this month. Um, Stefan, do you want to kick off? Yep. So we are getting close to the first milestone on the roadmap, which is making the various pieces that make up um, Flux Bootstrap um, promoted to G. And this means promoting three API um, kinds to V1, which is Git repository, part of source controller, uh, receiver, part of notification controller and customization part of customized controller. Um, from all of these, uh, I think the most uh, close one to GA right now is um, the repository, which was refactored some time ago. Um, for the Receiver in notification controller, we got a late addition to the API, an optional field that didn't have a much of an impact, even if it's not, no one used it <laughs> before. It feels kind of weird to make GA something that nobody used, but that's life. Um, and the customization API, which uh, had also has a new addition. Uh, it's a pull request I made for being able to add uh, labels and annotations to objects. Um, so Git repository will go to V1 as it is today with no modifications. Receiver will get um, match labels optional field and customization will get um, common metadata optional field. Uh, any concerns around these promotions from anyone here? No? Okay. So what I propose we do is uh, go slowly with the promotions and um, do a release candidates of Flux in the Flux repo. So let's say we get um, receiver first. Uh, we will do a normal release of the controller zero something, or we can do a 1.0.0 minus RC something. That's, that's something to discuss. After that, we will do a flux uh, to 2.0.0 RC1 release that comes with um, receiver GA. Then we add Git repository, we do release candidate two, then customization, release candidate three, and so on. Any problems, fixes, patches will, will be shipped as release candidates until we have all three APIs at V1. Uh, along with Flux Bootstrap, the command, and uh, uh, the Flux Terraform provider, all of these will be version two in the end. Max. Ideas? Uh, yeah, just just a, a question um, to clarify. When when you say we wanna we wanna cut an, an RC of flux, including the receiver v1 API, for example, would we only bump notification controller then? And release that, or do we do a normal release, bump all the controllers, including notification controller for this RC? Depends. 
do we have any bug fixes in other controllers or I mean no controller depends on provider so why would we bump helm controller because we change something in the provider wait right. I'm not sure no I mean I... like the question is do we want to do we want to do we want to do like a normal release where we bump all the controllers that were released in between or do we want to have this like be a special release that only bumps the receiver API? So I, I'm I'm confused. What's what's a normal release? A normal release means we release the controllers we have, which have changes. Yes. Yes. All right. Just to That's what, yeah. just so that we can get a sure. better understanding. Um if you're saying we are releasing the controller, do we continue to, or is your, your current uh, idea, Stefan, that we continue to be on the zero dot XX range um, while we just promote the API group version kinds to their V1s? Yeah, that's an option. So for, let's let's say notification control, right? Right now is at 0.33.0. Mm -hmm. um, we merge the promotion of receiver, then we can do V0340, or that's one option. Another option would be do a V1.0.0 .0 of notification controller. And have I think it. you would create a problem with the second approach because, in terms of what the controller does and how the application, how you view the application. If you would start on your RC range, then and you start pointing at 1.0.0, then with the Samfer specification, you can't introduce new things because you can't bump the minor range. It would be really weird to have a 1.1 RC without having um, ever had a, a 1.0.0 release. So I would say that until the application as a whole, uh, apart from the API versionings, is kind of feature complete in terms of all the API integrations, that's the only moment we can start moving away from the 0.xx range. But that will never be the case unless we all quit and no one works on Flux. We'll always How would that never be the case? At some point you have all receiver you have all kinds within the api group on uh, v1 right yeah because but then you can do a v1 without a release candidate then you're on 1.0.0 and then your next release can be 1.1.0 or is your id even a third thing which is release a release candidate for now then at some point you're like, okay, we are confident that together with flux release candidate, the binary, um, this works. Then you release a 1.0.0 with uh, V1 uh, receiver kind, but the other kinds on uh, a V1 beta one or V1 beta two. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then continue versioning from there. Yeah, is what what Kubernetes did right. Uh, the moment they promoted pod service and that was it the mm -hmm. the core things were at v1 deployment was on beta hpa was on beta ingress was on beta for years right they released ga of the cube api the kubelet and so on even if almost 99 percent of the apis were beta only the core ones like pod and and service were v1 right so it's I don't see a strict relationship between. Uh, well, the... I see one problematic thing if you would follow the Samfer is that you can't change your reconciler interface as long as they're in public. Like if you put a bit internal, which I've seen some controller runtime projects do, then you have no longer any publicly exposed API except for your main.go. And you can do whatever you want because there is no public facing API package which someone can depend on. Um, given the state of which some of the uh, internals from 
um, the notification controller, for example, are in, um, I would feel more comfortable with that because it means that we have more room to change things internally without changing the API itself because the interpretation of it, I mean, what we do technically internally can differ, right, without changing the API. Um, then having something publicly exposed and then having to stick to that because of some first strictness. So my, I'm not, I'm not, not opposed to any of the ideas, but if we would go for the 1.0.0, I would put the last remaining bit of what we have publicly exposed into internals, which is just a move. We have no. We do the controllers directory. The controllers directory still has a set of reconcilers, which are expected to continue to be the same. Then, as soon as you are pub publicly release uh, one point zero point zero. No, I mean Kubernetes has a controller directory. It's public, and they change it all the time. They also broke a client Go. Yeah, but what, Kubernetes times? doesn't. But there are zero major release. Not on on the one on they don't they on v zero and not v one. What do you mean? Like with v one, like if we publish like v one now, we we cannot we we cannot ship any changes to the API without like breaking changes without bumping the major version, which is different with v zero, of course. So if we stick to v0, we have more freedom to change stuff. I think that's what HIDA is aiming at, right? Yeah, and Kubernetes itself isn't a good example because they don't follow Semper. Yes. <laughs> Whereas yeah, we do. Our project is shaped our, after Kubernetes. So if they don't follow Semper, we shouldn't follow Semper. I mean, how can that's, we follow Semper just... if all our dependencies don't follow it? <laughs> we can follow Semper. I'm just saying that if you want to do that, you should move the controllers directory into the internals directory so that it's no longer part of the publicly exposed API. There you can go with Semfer because none of the things you're actually building on within your main.go is programmatically available for others to use. I mean, you should either adhere to the strictness of Semfer, you should change your versioning, but I think Semfer itself is fine as it is, but you should not publicly expose anything then that that might change i mean i'm i'm fine with either either moving it or or um uh, uh keeping it there and then continuing on a zero point uh, xx range but not sticking to semfer is something i would feel uncomfortable with because then you suddenly also have we break to builder, right? No, 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 no. I've seen control runtime projects do it. Why would you break Q builder? Q builder just looks for pods and then looks for um, certain uh, um, annotations within your code, but it, it it's not really dependent on things being available in a public package. I noticed that Q builder started moving by default. The generated product mm -hmm. has controllers private. So when you do kubebuilder add the API, it looks for the, the, API, the... API will be public, but controllers would be private. Yeah, and our API is versioned differently anyway. No, no, no. I was thinking about the kubebuilder CLI, not annotation. Because the kubebuilder CLI, when you add something, it creates a reconciler, right? It creates suite test.go, everything in the controllers directory. I think, I think that you. changed recently. Yes. The default is in a private controllers directory. Recently, oh, cool. or a so few we
I mean, I guess the more important part is the API, right? Like we, we have two different things we version anyway. So maybe starting with GAing the APIs now and sticking to a current theme would probably make sense keeping the Go modules at V0. Yeah, for moving the controllers to internal and do 1.0. The thing is like people will ask us, okay, Flux is 2.0, but all the controllers are zero dot something. So I can break the controller anytime along with its API because that's the version. And then we have to explain, no, but the API is version differently. We don't use Samvar for the API. We use the Kubernetes convention and so on, right? Because the APIs are not Samvar. It's V1 alpha one. So where is Samvar in that? We might need to have a do a lightning talk one day about some version. It's not that hard. <laughs> uh, also, our V1 is less about the controller maturity or more about the API maturity, right? Yes. Yes. So do we need to mark the controller projects V1? If we state this in the release specification, I think that would be fine. We don't need to mark the controllers for you one. That's what I said. Like we, we could stick to V0 and still publish V1 of the APIs and say mm -hmm. like the APIs are stable now and they will stick to a more strict. There is an, uh, uh, another, there is another interesting question here that comes to mind then. At present, our whole API directory is uh, published as a single uh, Go module, which means that a V1 can then ship with both V1 APIs and V1 beta 1 or V1 beta 2 APIs. Yes. Which That's is what's happening right now. Uh, Maybe there is a distinction between Go module version and APA version? Yeah, there is, but that's really hard to uh, properly inform people about in a way that it doesn't become confusing. My opinion, the only way to properly signal, hey, this is GA is to do 1.0, 2.0, if we do zero point something, so the when you do go get a I don't know git repository, you'll do go get zero point something. Then in there you have the v1 for git repository, right? So people will say, how is this GA if the definition is zero point something? And then we have to explain it, right? Um, but what if you, you have can to ask the same question to the Kubernetes people? Right? Why don't have people problems with that? Because they don't respect symbol and we want to do it. That's the main difference. I, us and I mean, I'm fine with you, that. I prefer it. Follow Max's idea about um, releasing the API packages if you want and increasing the controllers as a V0.xx. Yeah, that's what Then you have your API version at V1, your controller, which is only visible as an image. No, 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 please don't, let's not do that. Imagine then we have to keep a huge table of this controller version, 0 0.5, is only compatible with this API package, 1.2, 1. I mean, who will maintain the matrix of versions over versions and Kubernetes compatibility and Helm compatibility and customized compatibility? I mean, we are... Actually, my idea was... I'm sorry, carry on. Yeah, go. And my, my idea was not to, to, to version it differently from the controller, but say like, I mean, we, all, we as I said, like we have, the, we have the API versions 
like the the CRD versions, and we have all the Go stuff, and it's already separate. Like as you said, it's not Zenver; it's V1, V1 beta, something stuff like that. So if you release the API in V1, stick to V0 for the Go code. Nothing would really change, right? Except we say like the APIs that you use in Kubernetes are now generally available and, and adhere to more strict change policy, right? But I mean, you said people are already complaining that they have to import V0 Go modules. So, and, and I think they have a point. There is also the thing that we are going to do a GA release of Flux, which is Go, and all its dependencies, all the mm -hmm. actual things it uses, it's everything is zero point something. What that signals? Uh, yeah, it's, I mean, I get your point. Actually, we should do V2, right? Because it's Flux 2. And you like, you import Flux 2 with V1. <laughs> it's already strange. These controllers weren't before, so I think it's fine to do a Helm controller v1.0.0 .0 release and Flux 2 because it's sure, 2.0. Sure, sure. uh, Otherwise, we'd have to of, suffix v2 anyway. Yeah, but the combination of Flux 2.0, which depends on all the controllers and all the packages are on 0. Point something, and it feels very confusing to me. But I'm I'm okay if you if everyone wants to stay on zero point something for the controller it is fine. We just have to someone has to write down why we decided to do this and tell people, hey, don't don't be concerned. It's zero point something, but it's stable. Um, I'm fine moving them into the internal package and just go with v1. Totally fine with that. Regardless, we should we should move the controllers to internal. Uh, if QBuilder changed the, the template, I think we should just go with it right now and not wait any longer. I really hope no one uses the controllers as a dependency. That would be like really- You've never really treated cool. them as a public package anyway. Yeah, it's like only the APIs are that one. <clears throat> So we can at least have the decision now that we move controllers into internal for everything. And create an issue. And I then... had another idea, may not be so good. Uh, what about uh, moving the APIs from different controls into Flux to repository, like mirroring? <laughs> then Flux 2 can be V1, and with all the APIs, consumers can just pull that directly. Why would you do that? What's the advantage? To, to mark it actually V1. APIs will be under a repository that's V1. Yeah, but all your imports will still refer to the other copy. Otherwise, you would get a cross dependency thing because. Ah, that would be an issue. Like source control will depend on flux. To, ah, there will be conflicts. Won't work. <laughs> okay, no. I have a doubt. Uh, so, regardless of what happens with the controllers, we will do a Flux CLI 2.0.0 release. So, we start with RCs 2.0.0, RC 1, 2, 3, 4, until we get the APIs on V1 and we have the Flux bootstrap command. Um, Sort it out. I don't know. We have to but, uh, review the documentation and so on for it. But like the CLI is one entity. So like, like flux push, for example, is not stable. Like things might change in flux push and flux push. So how do we do a two like a two point zero point release for the CLI? 
Like everybody else does it. We tag it 2.0.0 and that's it. But after once we do a 2.0.0 release, we can't break the CLI as a whole, right? Like we can't say that one portion of the CLI is stable, but all the other sub commands are not, they can change. Yeah, this it. is what we are saying. Not, nothing is stable but Flux Bootstrap command. So we will not follow uh, same word anyway. Okay. Uh, I think we can refer to the Kubernetes API repository. Kubernetes slash API. Have you seen that? And maybe we can add a go mod v1 or v2 and then use zero point something for releasing, like Kubernetes does. And in that no, post, Kubernetes have, does have the use zero something for releasing the CLI and the controllers. Everything. No, not the API, it. not the controllers. API, I'm saying. Just the API. Can't we have a Kubernetes like? API repository for all the Flux APIs. Then make a huge monolith out of everything after we, <laughs> we spend so much time. Yeah, no, just the, just the APIs. Let's delete everything and, and put everything in Flux too. All the controllers and all the API like Kubernetes does. No, and it's like separating year, the rewriting CI. Separating the APIs and the implement, controller implementation. That's what Kubernetes does, right? Kubernetes is a monolithic project. Everything is in a single repo. But they have divided APIs into separate repository, right? No, it's a bot that mirrors. Oh, like there is a mirroring. Yeah, there is Should, a... Can we do that? No. From if each of the repositories, we 20 more people working on CI and creating <laughs> magical bots, sure. But with six people here, I mean, if we decide today that we want to change the repo structures, we can say goodbye to GA for this year because we we can't do it. Like even if we work day and night, it is tremendous work changing everything that we've built in two years in terms of building, testing, CI, everything is like, anyway, if we kind of said we should uh, make an announcement that we don't do GA and rediscuss really this longer. If you I have a question yeah. about the V2. So like I put this in the chat. I just want to make sure that I'm right there. Like if we release, if we put a V2 tag into the Flux2 repository and publish it as V2, we would have to we would have to put all the public packages in that repository behind V2, right? So all the imports would change if anyone imported stuff from that repository. Am I right? That's how Go versioning uh, mandates it, I guess. Which isn't necessary if we if we released it as V1. Because it's a special case in Go module territory. But Flux 2 is not a library project. Sure. I mean, we can say, hey, if you imported stuff from Flux 2, your problem. I just want to make sure that we are aware that people might be importing stuff from Flux 2 package, for example. We are. We are I don't know why. It. We, we are consuming it ourselves. Bootstrap was recently. Yeah. Yeah, Flux 2 package should be Flux package. 
not in the flux to repo. The flux to repo shouldn't expose anything public. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not now, but that would be very difficult to do. There are certain things there that they're literally specifically built for the CLI. Like the manifest generators, if you would move that to package, you get yourself into a, a mess in terms of having to do fix in the Flux CD package repository that are literally only required because you're trying to do something in the CLI. No, everything in package is used by both Flux tool and the Terraform provider. Yeah, because the Terraform provider kind of emulates what the CLI does, but there is no common ground other than trying to, for example, do a bootstrap. I don't see how it would belong in the Flux CD package repository, which is, by the way, extremely sensitive for more things being added in terms of how long the CI takes to build and mm. other things we have to manage. But it doesn't matter as long as multiple repositories that depend on the same code, it can go in package. And that's how I understand it. Like packages, like a common package so that multiple repositories don't have duplicated code. If they serve a broader use case apl applicable to at least a broader set of things. But in this case, I see the Flux Terraform provider as an extension to the Flux CLI, as in it tries to kind of do what the Flux CLI does, but I don't see it anything that's in the package repos package directory of the Flux2 thing being used by the controllers, for example. Whereas Git, the Git thing we have in package is being used by the controllers and by the CLI. Um, all of the API things that are in there are being used as subsets of the APIs that the controller exposes and which are being consumed by Flux2. The other things are very generic, uh, the known host things, uh, some, some other things, but I don't see anything like the things we have in Flux2 Flux package are like things like bootstrap manifest gen, a log specifically is, is uh, shaped for doing CLI logging and not any controller logging. Um, okay, so, so whatever, whatever Terraform provider depends on from the Flux2 package, how about we move that to Flux CD package and the rest of the stuff can go into internal, Flux2 internal. But then you are already moving Bootstrap away from the CLI. Yeah. I don't yeah. see how that's a, a win. Isn't and I also don't see why the CLI can't have a package directory. I mean, there are many, many tools that have uh, SOPS, for example, that has all their libraries next to their uh, CLI uh, thing just because they are facilitating part of the CLA API, but also provide um, APIs to other Go applications to do what the CLI is supposed to do. I mean, it's not very... There's no, there's no problem. It's just that once you put the 2.0.0 tag, as Max said, we would need a V2. Yeah, so just move the package directory to V2. If you can do that, then yeah, it's fine. I think you can just change the the module definition in the go mod file without having to move the files the actual go files but the imports change like anyone who wanted to to use that had to import slash v2 but I mean that's life right you want to bump the major version some work you gotta do are you seeing the so in go mod? Uh, flux to the the module name will be github.com flux in the flux to slash v2 yes okay i don't see any any issues with that and we don't have to change anything afterwards right we just tag it 2.0 and need to in in terraform code will do go get slash v2 
Aeron 2.0.0. I think you still have to change the import path because your module import path has changed. So you need to suffix it. Ah, yes. The All the consuming video. projects yeah. have to change. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we have a single project, so I don't see it's it's simple to change it. But that's a that's a good point. So we we should can you add this to the issue so we don't forget about it? Uh, here, Max, can you add a comment around GoMod and all, all the changes? Creating an issue to move all the controllers to the internal. Yeah, that's that should be a different issue in in Flux to Umbrella. So just to have it clear, in terms of release candidate versioning for Flux 2, once we do RC.1, we will continue on RC.2, RC.3, RC.4. Instead of doing minor bumps, It's not clear to me when we move from, well, once we have an RC.1 um, and we discover that some improvements have to be made or something, then you do an RC.2. What's the moment where we move to either V2.0.0 or move to V2.1.0 because I think having a long running release candidate range is less clear in terms of, hey, this adds new features than bumping the minor version of a 0 0.x point y. So, okay, let's see. So I'm trying to get that defined. Yeah, can you open the roadmap? Um, yeah, Zoom hasn't been allowed me to click and open in the browser. But I no worries, try, uh... you can just keep it in your browser. And yeah, 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 okay. You can open it, right? So my idea was with every check we cross here, mm -hmm. we bump the RC version. Mm -hmm. We do Git repository v1, that's RC1. Maybe we do Git repository v1 and receiver v1 at the same time. That's RC1. We add two checks to the uh, milestone. When we have all the checks done, then is when we do 2.0.0. So from the moment we do the RC1 release, we are not going to ship things outside the the uh, the scope here of, of G. of course we can do bug fixes or whatever but we are not going to ship I don't know proxy support to Git repository until we we are done with with uh, with this milestone makes sense yeah okay so um... we should like be very quick in doing the two point zero point zero we can't just you do release candidates for, for a very long time. Uh, because then we are, we can't ship any more features and so on, so. Yeah, we will be on pause anyway, uh, as soon as KubeCon is, I guess, but. Um, yeah, so given that I would, I 
maybe mark some of the commands we have explicitly as experimental in the or, or beta or whatever in the uh, help uh, flag so that it's clear to a user what can still receive yep. changes and what can't and i would then also as part of the checklist specifically focus on the ux of the bootstrap command which we get out of which we basically get into like a stable thing to ensure that things like output uh, 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 the get commands for the types that go to v1 the export commands that go to the, 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 basically everything that belongs to the API kinds that we go over them and that resolve any user experience issues that we that we may observe. Because for example, I created an issue a while back about new lines being added to documents. That's just not something that I would expect to happen in something that's called GA. So in terms of tidying, I think there is quite some, there are some things left um, which we need to focus a bit more on. Probably all quick fixes, but you get what I mean? Yeah, of course. The export thing is, is quite annoying. Yeah, I found the curl bit, the curl bit, bit already, but... Um, Why didn't you fix it? Yeah, because... <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> I have a thousand and one other things to do. I found a very specific issue about what required fixing, but I, I didn't have time to actually go through it myself and test it. Um, we basically use print lines somewhere where we already generate a new line. So we insert files okay. to, yeah. Um, but okay, yeah. Now so actually, yeah. Jan, Jan is volunteer. Uh, but Janis from Eforx volunteered to 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 tackle that. Uh, I just checked back with him on the progress. Okay, no, that's, that would be very nice. No, then then the picture for me is clear. Then I think we should do some 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 shaping in, to assure that also at various points it's uh, well kind of signal to users. But in terms of versioning, I think that would be that would be okay. So. One thing for me would be to add to this checklist all the commands or some compact version of the commands. For example, flux, get, pipe, export, pipe, delete, pipe, whatever, whatever, git repository, whatever, whatever, receiver and customization, right? Yeah, and basically. Add and install. And only these commands or do you want to write in the help so we also need to figure out how how we should where we should write it i'm guessing in the long description of each yeah. command because it renders on the website nicely it's indexed and everything so we need to add beta and ga to everything right i would omit it from the ga just assume that if it if, if it isn't mentioned it's just okay. something that's finalized in terms of flags and then uh, for the other ones i would add well people are always scared for experimental so i wouldn't call it experimental but i would say like um what's <laughs> What's a nice um, yeah yeah you need to come beta. up with the... beta I think beta is probably the best I, I was thinking about yeah. unstable but it also sounds like it will fall apart mm -hmm. at every moment this command is in beta phase changes may occur or something like that one proposition yeah there. changes and refinements or something make it a bit more positive in terms of uh, yeah. communication yeah i think that would be okay because then we kind of have the explicit declaration that some parts of it are yeah. um 
Yeah, yeah, great idea. Okay, so let's add this as a to do. Uh, I will create action items. Uh, so one was um, figuring out the the two. Logic, uh, logic. I still have a confusion. Uh, we have one week left, right? Yeah. Are we going to market V2 by the end of the month? Or we will trade on RC1 is the focus, I think. Okay. Yeah. So the even if we go for get it. something oh. V1 from all the APIs, right? Okay. And we'll we'll get as much as possible we can do by KubeCon, then it will be a break. For many of us, then we'll resume with the release candidates. But hopefully, let's say two weeks after KubeCon, we, we should be done with it. Um, okay. I mean, the roadmap so says Milestone will be marked by the V2 release. But I guess we have some wiggle room in terms of time. Oh, we, we the, must have. The roadmap is a desire, it's not a. <laughs> Mm. So almost towards the end of April, we'll have actual V1, right? Or V2. Or towards the end of April, we'll have actual V2, right? Not RC anymore. Okay. okay. Uh, I have not written in the topics, but can we also discuss about removal? Uh, the access from field that we are removing. Should we edit the existing API that we already published to remove them or don't do anything and just when we are going for V1, don't add access from there? So the uh, I, I've commented on on the pull request. Mm -hmm. Access from is for all APIs. We are not promoting all APIs. So mm -hmm. it matter has V one or not has no meaning for that. We are removing it, and we also have to remove it from image reflector controller and delete all the code. Mm. That's still, you're at you're editing a published API. If you're removing, why not do v1 v.3 and remove that? It would be similar to doing a patch release and removing something. Although it's not used, but maybe not to users. Yeah, we'd have to change all the update order manifest to move to V1 beta 3 without them um, ever introducing something there because it's not, it, it has never been used or advertised. So they probably didn't even configure it at some point. If you apply the new CRD, it will just wipe the fields. Although, What would happen if you have it in storage with the fields already set? I was going to ask It will be ignored during the unmarshal. No, all custom resources will be marked as invalid. Hmm. Let's say for source control, it's not an issue. That field wasn't, is not in use has no meaning, but for image reflector controller, everybody uses it because we have it in the docs. Helm controller also uses part of the ACL library. I don't think it does it uh, expose, that it exposes the API, but I think it uses part of the mechanics that the API offer. That, that's different. Uh, the ACL, there are two ACL packages, one in the API and one in runtime, which deals with uh, access control. Uh, impersonation on all of that. Um, 
For image reflector, it will be really, really tough. Mm. We we should bump the version. I would leave it there. Another option is for image reflector controller, we leave it there. We mark it as deprecated and not used, ignored. And we remove it when we release the reflector APIs v1. I have a third option. Mm -hmm. Just remove the ACI fields from the Git repository kind and do the others when you promote those to the V1 beta three you're going to do because there are changes to them or because you're moving them into V1. Great idea, okay. Okay. Explain again, I couldn't understand. We only remove the ACI fields once we move the, 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 the APIs anyway to the new versions, either because we promote them to V1 or because we have another reason to move them to V1 beta three. And by doing mm -hmm. that, we now only have to touch the Git repository thing and um, the others we can just leave alone and let them continue to be. And then we can just so gradually phase the, it out. In the current V1 beta to Git repository, will you remove it or not? No. No, okay. in a V1. Only in V1. OK, so you're leaving it as it is. Fine. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's best. I, I closed my, my pull request and I will, after, so after Max figures out the documentation bit, I'm going to do kit repository v1 following Max modifications of the make file and other things. Um, we just have to deal with the order, right? That's, that's all is left, Max. Uh, sorry, with the what? The order in which we ran. Uh, yeah. I, I figured I found a solution to that. Um, we just need to agree on it. Okay, cool. Because like we're pulling some of the items from the repository, others are in the website, and we have to put a menu weight in the front matter. Mm -hmm. And we don't have a front matter in the specs in the repository. So yeah, I I used comments um to to declare a way it's not the most beautiful solution but it works okay i will i will, I will look at that okay so we are thanks almost done with uh with the procedure of promoting something to v1 being able to generate docs and publish the docs on the web right so we are we are great in that the uh, last item on the list, and I know we are pretty much on time now, is the long-term support pledge. Um, I think given we are still going to figure out how we do RSCs, that we can theoretically discuss this at a later moment in depth. Um, I think in terms of security patches, that it would be really great if we could at least do our best efforts to patch it backwards, depending on the severity of the CVE that we're dealing with. I mean, if we, for example, introduce some major issue with a cube config that isn't sanitized properly, I uh, would feel really bad to not backport it to two or three minor versions because it's, it's yeah, it's, it's just a huge issue that really needs solvents and, and makes your whole thing insecure and people can't just bump minor even if they wish to. Um, it does mean though that we need to rethink the way we do releases and um, I think we need to take another look at how we did it for Flux V1 where we had branching strategies per minor range in which we would branch off to uh, um, a release branch called 1.x.1.x one x and then uh, what we did i think was that we continue to um basically merge to main and then if we felt that we really required to do a patch release or, or uh, main was still good to go to not do uh any patch release we would just branch off to i think 
a specific release uh, branch and then merge that back into the release, the long running release branch, so the 1.1.x. And then, then if we had, yes, it's a whole dance. If we do that for eight, yeah, years, but I, I've been, I've, if we do it for CVEs and then just CVEs that we introduce ourselves, so not keeping up with like security patches from other things, except if they're really, really severe, but like, so no container vulnerabilities, uh, uh, just like, oh, we made a mistake and something is insecure or, or there is something that we depend on, which isn't a container vulnerability. I want to be explicit about that because then we get ourselves into a very nasty situation. Um, but it's like, I don't know, some panic that can be triggered. Like we had, uh, to customize sometimes have, uh, has or whatever, then we can pretty easily uh, cherry pick those from main, put those into the, the, the release branch that we want to have released and get that out as a separate release. It just means that we need to start branching off and have two additional steps, but it's, it's, it's not that much work as long as we, um, That's yeah. Right. Oh, I, I get that. It's only for our CVs. We are not going to backward. I don't know bump of some alpine version or whatever my my main concern is with the workflow we had for flux v1 is that for normal releases when you don't backport at all it doubles the work of just doing the release because you have instead of what we do today we we open a pull request we merge that pull request and then we do two tags, one for the API and one for the controller. Instead of that, we'll have to do three pull requests. You open the pull request on the release minus something branch. You review merge it there. Then you have to cut the API release and the controller release from that branch, but then you don't have the change log and anything in main. So you need to link from the release page to the this release branch, but the release branch, like Kubernetes and all the other projects are doing, should be deleted the moment you end up at N plus four, because you, you only keep the latest three releases as long running branches. So mm, you and then you continue. have to you can continue to keep those around, but they will become stale. That's also what we did for Flux 1. Yeah, and you get this huge history. Yeah, I don't care about the history. I mean, it's, for, it's, just, it's a version system. That's what the history is for, right? Otherwise, you end up with things that no longer belong to a specific branch in an obvious way, and then you have loose hanging commits for which it's very hard to where they originate from. Yeah, what I was trying to suggest is to do normal releases from the main branch. And only when you need to do backports, you go through the release branches. So you, you cut the release from it. Let's say you don't do a backport, right? You, you have the branch 1.0 or source from the is release minus 1.0, right? Like, like Kubernetes does. So you have that. You decide, I, okay, I want to do a release. I have a bunch of changes in main. You open the pull request on main, you put there the change log, you cut the release and the, the action that publishes the artifacts for that tag does a rebase of the release 1.0 on main. So takes what's in main and puts it there. So instead of us having to do triple requests is fully automated. When we have to do work is only when we do backports or cherry picking. But the usual release flow should not make me do three pull requests, backport this, merge into that. The whole dance in, in Flux One was terrible. Uh, and it takes a very long time. It's three times more work, uh, just waiting for CI to finish. Imagine mm -hmm. that, like just CI, three times instead of one. 
the problem with rebasing is is that once you put different things into your release branch is that your release branch will get overwritten because you're rewriting the tree right that's the same as the reason why you need to force push after you you open a pr but main has changes so now you need to rebase and then you force push and now the whole tree is different so that would create issues with the traceability of any patch releases you create. I will uh, do some studying on, uh, on, on proven situations solutions because I know, for example, that I've seen projects that have automated cherry picking and other solutions in place, which seems to heavily reduce the way um, the, the manual labor that comes with branching strategies like this and then we can uh, discuss it more i think yeah i'm looking at kubernetes and it's yeah it's scale up this release bot that does everything <laughs> yeah no i know libgit too for example has some uh, some automation around it and that's maintained by a single person. So, <laughs> so that should be There's a sign. That. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, how do we time our like our own release? Not where this base release how do we do like every three months every four months is there any schedule for that so what i was i i i made some changes to the to the way things are phrased in the long-term pledge thingy and the conclusion there what i was trying to say is we do at least three releases per year at some point after each Kubernetes release, after we test our things, we bump packages, we promote the client go and everything in, in all controllers. So those are mandatory releases in order to keep compatibility with uh, Kubernetes and, you know, end of life things and, and all of that, right? So those are mandatory releases that we must do. Outside of those, we are going to do minor rele patch releases at any time we have bugs or whatever, and extra minor releases every time we ship features, right? So we do at least three releases, but we can, if we, you know, <laughs> uh, Add that many features as we did before, we'll keep releasing a, a minor release every two weeks. Two weeks, and that's that's okay. But what we what we are trying to tell users is that we'll always do a release after a Kubernetes release. So we'll not you'll not end up with flux which depends on client go, which is no longer supported, right? Because people I, I, I get that people want that assurance, right? I, the latest Flux release should work with all the supported Kubernetes versions which are available today. And the only way to ensure that is making a, a release as soon as they as they do it. So we'll not Why? have a, a fixed... I'm sorry, but like, I mean, if, if Kubernetes release or a, a new Kubernetes versions release, Flux is still compatible with that. Why do we would we have to publish a Flux release just to bump the dependencies, like the Kubernetes test it. Yes, bump the dependencies and and test it and verify that it works. I mean, with server side deploy, dry run, all of that, every single release breaks something, and I had to change. Okay, that's fair. You cannot say that, oh, even if Kubernetes does a release, it can't impact us because we use client go. Well, 
in practice, that's really not the case. So the okay. only way to you know, ensure that for our users is actually go there after each release, bump everything, test everything, and, and do our own uh, releases. Uh, we are not, it's not a big hurry to do it, right? Because now Kubernetes has prolonged their long-term support. So we are not in a tight spot. It's like if tomorrow there is a new Kubernetes release and Flux doesn't work with that for some reason, some changes, not everyone will, will upgrade because the current Kubernetes release is still supported for I don't know, six months or whatever, eight months, like one year. So we still have some time, but imagine that, I don't know, someone upgrades and they will complain, like, Flux is not working. We should, we should be aware of that before someone upgrades and tries it, right? And, and that's what, what, what this plan tries to solve. It's like, we should be aware of any changes, breaking changes or, I don't know, Maybe we did something wrong in Flux. Maybe we need to adapt. I mean, in, in the server side, the ply things, there are, every time there is a new API version for, for example, horizontal pull -up, a scaler has a bunch of issues with, with the dry run. And every time they release a new version, we have to use and convert the new version to something stable and so on. There are, there are all sorts of workarounds there. And in order to, to, to keep that running, we have to upgrade all the time. Uh, so we'll not have a fixed release cycle every four months, four weeks or three weeks. No? We'll continue as we do today. So there is a fixed release cycle. We'll do at least three releases per year after approximately two, three weeks after a Kubernetes release. No, uh, apart from Kubernetes release, our own, our features. There is plan for Q2, 2.1. But before that, do we not do any releases, any new feature that we add? Let's say you add a new feature in Helm controller, no? We could, of course. It's, it's up to us. And what would be the version 2.0.1, 2, 3? If there is a new feature, we bump the minor version, right? Mm -hmm. When if the Kubernetes version come, we bump it again. Or mm -hmm. we can say, hey, Kubernetes is going to be released in three weeks from now. Let's postpone the future and wait three weeks and release it then, right? We, of course, we can meet and decide, let's not ship it today. Uh, what? What I also think we should do more and more after, especially after the GA release is shipping new features under feature flags, like what Hide did with, with Drift Control, um, what also Hide did in, in Customize Controller when we allow people to disable caching and, and all of that. I think new features after GA, after releasing 1.0 of each controller, would be nice to have it under a future flag at the beginning. Tell people, hey, this is experimental. Please give it a try. And we'll promote that. We'll enable that by default, I don't know, in one month from now or on the next uh, uh, really on the next Kubernetes release, right? We, we, could, we could do it like that. We could ship new features under future flags. And only when that release cadence comes, only then we enable by default some, some features that we deem ready um so does that mean let's say we have image automation v1 or the image api v1 beta 3 will that be a patch release a patch release will, be a will patch it be release. a patch release okay new api patch no API. i would not think that's huh? a patch release I would think that's a minor release. A minor release, sorry, not patch release, yeah. minor release. Yeah. But if it happens, so between 2.0 to 2.1, if we have to release image API v1 beta 3, how will you do it? 
We do 2.1, of course. But 2.1 is HelmGA, right? We've changed that? No, but 2.1 isn't tied to HelmGA. No, it's not. I mean, in the roadmap, there is in no the version. Two, two Helm release is tied to just to um, quarter two, or at least the end of quarter two, hopefully, because no, they, I, I might it's know where they went one. <laughs> In the roadmap, uh, it's written to that one. Oh, that should be sure. changed then, because we, okay. we can still introduce features um, in the meantime. It's just that, yeah. Yeah, if we if we release 2.1, we'll go and edit the roadmap and move uh, the Helm 1 and say, we, we, uh, we will do the Helm GA in 2.2. If we can't do it and 2.2 gets out because we have a new feature before we can do HMGA, we will bump that mm -hmm. version there. Uh, I don't think we should stick to versions that the importance is the API versions and, and the milestones, right? I would then maybe just note in the in the roadmap that it's in a future 2.x point X yeah. release. So then people just know that it's coming instead of being like, hey, I looked at your roadmap a while back and um, why is it, it isn't it included in 2.1? Yeah, I'll do the change now. Good point. This is because uh, whenever people ask about Helm improvements, we have been telling people it would be on 2.1, which would be this year. I've been telling people it would be on in quarter two. I've been sticking to a time schedule yeah. instead of a version schedule. Yeah. Same. <laughs> okay. Okay, so as we refactor, uh, what do you do? Rewrite notification, some of the notification controller parts and image definition parts, we'll keep on releasing minor versions. Fine, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, I tried to explain in the in the long terms for that once we get to uh, out of the zero something, once we get to 2.0 and 1.0, major version bounds means we are rewriting everything and we are changing everything, which is not the case. Adding features, promoting APIs and so on go under minor releases. Uh, uh, Flux 3.0 probably means a new repo, all the controllers go to the bin and we do, I don't know, monolithical, we go back to flat sun or whatever. <laughs> One confusion I had uh, at the start of the meeting, you were describing that we'll put uh, image uh, the receiver API in RC1 and then Git repository in RC2. Is that what you meant? Or if Paul already just put all of them in RC1? You want to do in stages? Yeah, I think uh, we should ship release candidates as soon as we have something ready. Uh, that, that's my only reason. I mean, if if let's say receiver is ready tomorrow, should we delay delay everything one week because we didn't have Git repository? I think not. I think we should do release candidates and maybe see if, I don't know, there are issues with upgrading the CRDs or whatever. We had so many issues uh, with with uh, the latest image automation, we had to undo stuff. Um, there was there were many many issues with with CRD upgrades. So getting those as fast as possible and and see any for example now is uh, for Git repos to be the first time ever when we delete a field from a CRD. I have no clue what will happen when people will upgrade on unsupported Kubernetes versions or whatever. Kubernetes 1.19 that so many people are still on. Right? So I'm, I'm really scared about removing that, but um, there's like, but I think we could do receiver and Git repository at the same time um, if, Max is done today with the docs and everything looks good. It should take me 
couple of hours tomorrow to do the Git repository thing. It's just copy paste and. Here's this saying Git repository is ready, but we still have to remove the checksum, right? From the API? Yeah, I mean, it's just deleting code, right? Mm, <laughs> not really. Carefully. <laughs> It's, uh, you need to, it's taken into account in conditions to facilitate the uh, rollover. Um, so it's not just deleting it from the API, but you also need to remove the references to the field and then check if the logic still adds up. It's not, it's not much work, but it's not just a, the, the, the case of um, just deleting the uh, the API bit. All the new logic's already there. You just need to safely ensure that the the, 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 the leftover bits are properly removed. Um, for example, we are in the storage using a multi-writer to always write the SHA, SHA checksum um, that can now be removed. Um, but yeah, it's like, Half a day work, I think. Can you do it? The removal of the checksum? Yeah, Sunny, how far did you already look into it? Or should I do it? No, I'm still doing reviews. Now. Okay, then I will do it tomorrow morning, first thing. Okay. Um, I think that was everything there was to discuss. Um, there is a meeting on the list, but I can't see the time for it. Does anyone know when the Fiasco live stream about automating Kubernetes is taking place? Being the meetup.com thing? It's, it, was at four, it was at 4 p.m. our time, so it was uh, one and a half hour ago. Um, if you're interested in Stacey uh, already Fiasco, posted a link. Where? Uh, I think in the Flux channel. Oh, well, if you are interested in using VS Code and uh, tighter Flux integration with it, then you might want to check and see if you can watch it somewhere after it has been published. Um, thank you all. I think it was a very productive meeting. I have one small thing. Sure. Discussion. Two minutes. That doesn't require any discussions. <laughs> FYI, there is a PR that I opened yesterday on the Google repository, which adds proxy support. That is the first step in adding tenant specific proxy support in Flux. So once we can get that merged, we can uh, get it merged into our Git packages. Then we can add, uh, modify our Git repository API to have proxy support. So I think uh, Paolo is off this week. He mentioned something to me about Application. Um, what might be worth though, given we now have maintainership over the GoGit project itself, is to also try to um, file it against the main GoGit repository just to get the conversation started. Um, because I would be really happy if we can drop our fork, like really, really happy. Um, yeah. Okay. And I think are there other things that aren't in the GoGit? Repository there yet? A couple of things. Uh, I, I'll need to go to the history, but I think that I don't think we have parity yet. There are a couple of things that are in our fork, but not upstream. Okay, it would be really great to have that sorted. Yeah, okay. I'll uh, add that on my list of things. Thank you. All right, guys. See you uh, next week. Yep. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.